You're listening to The Business Marketing Show, episode number 50. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Welcome to The Business Marketing Show. Uh, I'm Brendan, here with my co-host, Ed. How are you, Ed? Very good, Brendan. How about yourself? Good. Good, good. It's Friday, as per usual, when we record. <laughs> it's, hmm. it's an exciting day when it's a Friday. It is. It's raining here today. And it's even more it's exciting. It's Friday. But here's the thing. None of us want to wake up and discover that our website isn't live anymore or that our domain names have been stolen or there's something broken. Mm-hmm. So, or a website's been. What hacked. are we going to talk about? Yeah, website's been hacked. Um, so that's a bit of a hint about what we're talking about. Mm. So, what are we doing today, Brendan? Well, I guess the title of this show is eliminating the downside and protecting your web assets. Um, and uh, basically, we're going to talk about protecting your website and your online marketing stuff. But I've had quite a few people come to us in the last couple of weeks with hacked websites, and they've been hacked for a while. Um, and didn't know one of them, um, he Googled his own business name and then saw in the search results it said, blah, 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 his brand name, hacked by Zero Gravity Crew or something like this. So, um, it's, oh, no. yeah, it happens more often than people think, um, particularly as, well, the severity of things like this happening has increased a lot and people haven't realized because they rely so much on, on web and IT and they haven't really changed the way they... I guess, approach security and things like that over the last five years. So, you know, the risk has gone up and the impact of a problem has gone up as well. So, um, we have a list of some simple things you can do that cost nothing in most cases um, that will eliminate or almost eliminate um, the chance of being hacked or something going wrong and protecting things like your domain name and website and SEO rankings is another important one too. Yeah, too true. So why don't we begin with domain names because that's really where everything comes from. Once you've registered your domain name, everything else follows that. So what are some of the things we need to do when you're registering a domain? Well, uh, the domain name is the foundation of everything, right? So it's probably the most important piece and probably given the least amount of attention of all your IT because it's like, what's a domain name, like 10 or 20 bucks a year? So, mm. probably the first one, well, it also, you know, we talk about your email as tied to the domain name. So, you know, over the course of business over several years, say over five years, how many people have your email address and they have your business card and they're referring people to your website and their email address. So, while yep. it's kind of like this, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like you have something that costs you 10 or $20 a year, the domain name, but the amount of value is exponentially tied to that domain name is exponentially more than that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it's really not any different to having a phone number you've used for years and years, and all of a sudden you don't have that phone number anymore. So everyone that's known that phone number can't call you. Yeah. So the domain name is the same. You've got to make sure that you protect it, um, register it for as many years forward as you possibly can. Yep. And typically with a .com, you can register it for, for 10 years in advance. Um, and typ- your typical Australian domain is two years. So you just got to make sure all of that information on your domain registrar, which is where you register the domain, like it could be you know GoDaddy or it could be Crazy Domains or Net Registry, whoever you're using, and make sure your credit card details are up to date, that your address, your email address, a secondary email address is on there, not just the one that you use for business, mm-hmm. uh, so that you get notified if your credit card expires or if there's any issues with your domain. Mm-hmm. And the other thing you need to make sure you do, the most good domain registrars have something that we call two-step authentication for logging in. So you have your phone associated with your account so every time you go to log in you get a you have to input a special code only from your phone using something like Google Authenticator or another app called Authy is a possible possible use one and and 
the only person who can access it is is you. So if the other, if someone tries to, to log in to get your domain name or try and steal it, they can't. Or guess so your you, password. Those like sorts of things we've talked about before. Get, a lot yeah. of people using the same yep. password on ten different things. So if one of them has a security problem, they have an ac- If someone has that password, they have access to everything else, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, everything else follows this particular uh, domain registration. So your all your website details are on it. As you said, your email all the links you've ever built up on your website pointing back to it. So if you lose your domain name for, for whatever reason or you forget to renew it, it's not we're just talking about someone stealing it, this is talking about just forgetting to renew it, uh, then you're in big trouble if you can't get it back. Yeah, I think that's probably the more common one, right? Domains expiring and people don't even know they've expired until their email stops working. Yes, very, very common. And if it's a generic domain, they're going to have a great deal of trouble getting it back because it will go into the open auction system. So they may end up having to try and start bidding on a domain to, to get it back. Now, they may be lucky and get it for 20 bucks, but if, if it goes back into the system and it's a really popular generic term, they could end up having to spend thousands of dollars trying to get it. Uh, different story if it's a trademark um, or a registered business name that's not generic, they would be able to get that back a bit more easily, but still all painful and downtime of not having the domain. Yeah, yeah. The other thing I don't think you mentioned in that was turning on the who is or the privacy protection so the general public yeah. can't easily see who the owner of the domain is or the ownership details because that's important for yep. a few reasons. One, so it can't be socially engineered away like in some cases if you have a more basic registrar and someone has enough information about you like if you're using a cheap registrar like GoDaddy there have been cases where people have had a little bit of information about someone and managed to get hold of a domain name um, with that information and the other one is that if uh, if you're not using the privacy protection then your email address is open to the public so it's much more likely you're going to get a bunch of spam if you don't have that turned on um, and I think a lot of registrars, I, you know, we've talked about so many different registrars. Namecheap is one I use a lot, um, and Namecheap yeah. offer it for free. Um, and other, other registrars, it's a few bucks, but I think it's definitely worth doing, right? Even for the just for the benefit of eliminating the additional spam it can generate if that information is public. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you have domains like I do, where you're trying to sell them, I typically don't bother because I want people to be able to contact me in whichever way they they find the domain. But if it's a bit, if it, start again. If it's a domain you're using for business, definitely hide that sort of stuff for all the reasons you mentioned. So that's a good point. Yeah. So that's domains. What's next from domains? Cool. So domains are a foundational component. The other one is. Um, DNS hosting, which we've talked about before, I think, and a lot of people don't know that it exists or what it is or whatever, but just briefly, there's four And what parts. does DNS stand for? Well, I think every time I bring it up, you mention, you ask that. So, DNS stands for Domain yeah. Name System, um, and it's one of yep. four parts of the hosting. So, briefly, the four parts are the, the domain name itself or the domain register, which we've just talked about. You've got DNS hosting, and then you've got web and email. And most often, the DNS hosting is just bundled in with the web hosting or the email hosting, whatever. But um, in the hosting episode, we talked about that, you know, for maximum security and uptime, they should all be with four different companies. That way, if one has a problem, and they will all have a problem at some stage over the lifetime, nothing is 100% uptime. But um, they should all be with four different companies. Um, But particularly the Mm -hmm. DNS, because it is a foundational component, is very important that, again, it gets zero attention because most people don't even know it exists or they're not actively paying anything for it. Um, But... If the DNS is hacked, then people can do all sorts of dodgy things to your website. Um, there's all sorts of problems, all sorts of things that go wrong. So, generally speaking, we will recommend or we will put clients on um, DNS hosting from cloudflare.com. And there's a few different reasons for it. One is they're one of the fastest DNS providers in the world. They also have a plan that is, they have a free plan that is perfect for most small businesses. And then on top of that, they have a whole bunch of additional services around security um, and website acceleration. So not only um, is it you know, a better DNS hosting provider, the website will be a lot more secure. They have a 
um, most people don't know that most website hosting doesn't have a, a proper firewall. So Cloudflare actually adds a layer of firewall on top of that. And then the website will go faster because they have all these acceleration tools built in. They'll compress the website and do things to the images. So they load faster. So often we'll see a few second speed increase just by moving a client to Cloudflare. But generally they also have tools in there that report on the amount of hack attempts and all this sort of stuff that are hitting the website. And often we'll find like a third of the website traffic or traffic a website's getting are automated tools just you know, looking for security holes that are being deflected by Cloudflare. It's quite amazing. So um, yeah. particularly if you're a bigger business or getting a lot of traffic or getting traffic spikes or you have a prominent brand, I think Cloudflare, particularly because there is no cost on the base plan, I think it's definitely worth looking at. Yeah, and, and the next step up is not very expensive. What is it? It's like fifty dollars a year or something yeah, like that. I think it's sixty fifteen bucks a month or ten bucks a month or Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so it's not Yeah, it's pretty not, much nothing anywhere. Right? Not for the protection that it gives. It's it's a fantastic service. So yeah, yeah Cloudflare is very important to look at. Or ask your hosting people. What do we about. have next? Uh, yeah, yeah. Next one is another one that a lot of people don't think about. Um Particularly as, particularly for e-commerce businesses, because um, their website, I guess their income is directly tied to their website. So every minute of downtime potentially costs the money. So if you're relying on your website heavily for sales or inquiries or whatever, it would pay to get some sort of hosting monitoring setup that will alert you if the website is down for any substantial period of time. So we have this. Mm. We host a few hundred client websites now and we have this um, across the system and we'll get you know again there will always be downtime you have to plan for it don't expect anything to be up all the time um, but I get a notification if any of our hosting environments are down for more than five minutes at a time um, and we use a tool called pingdom so pingdom.com and I think mm -hmm. I think we pay something like a hundred bucks a year and that's for all our hosting so you know, it's really cheap and it sends SMSs. So if it's down for more than five minutes, I'll get an SMS on my phone and the team will be alerted. Um, and it's really good. And occasionally there'll be, you know, problems we weren't aware of or one of our wholesale providers has yeah. some sort of unplanned outage and it will notify me quicker than they'll notify me. So um, I think if you're an e-commerce business in particular, that's really important. Or if, yeah, you're generating a lot of leads from the website, so pingdom.com. What does it, uh, how does it tell you, not how does it tell you, but when the actual site's down, what qualifies as a site being down? Just how, how does it know? Uh, so it has a lot of different ways. It has a whole bunch of different checks in there. Um, but its most basic, basic check is, and the way we have it set up, it, every minute it hits the website and tries to, tries to load the page. And if it loads uh -huh. the page and it gets the right server code, server response, then the website's up. If it doesn't get the right server response or if it doesn't load correctly, then that's the website down. So if it's down for continuously five times in a row, we'll get an alert. But there are other ways to do it as well. And there's other, it can monitor other systems, but you know, for a small business or like an e-commerce business, that'll be fine just to go and check to see if the website loads. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll have a link for Pingdom in the show notes. What is next? What's next? You want to take the next one? Yeah, uh, so what have we got the next one? Akismet spam filtering. Is that the next one we've got on there? That is. Um, okay. Oh, no, no. Sorry. Regular, regular patches and updates for your CMS. That is a big one. That is a huge, huge one. Uh, and that is something that WordPress is quite vulnerable to and other CMS platforms like Drupal or Joomla because there's always security patches that WordPress is coming out with. So when an update comes through, you really need to get on top of that because the reason the security update has been put out there is because other WordPress sites are getting hacked by people finding holes in the system. So when they put this out, very, very important. But most people, like I go on people's WordPress uh Logins into the back end and see they've got like you know ten uh, updates out of update out of out of order. You know they have they've mm -hmm. missed them for ten times in a row. So you 
really got to get onto them or have it automated so it gets done straight away. Yeah, I mean, the CMS is really software, just like the software on your computer, so it needs regular updates and patches. So this, we had one particular website that was really out of date and had me patched for a long time, and we think that's why it was hacked. So it's the problem is it's not a case of if it'll get hacked. It's more of a case of when it will get hacked because there's so many automated tools running around the web looking for these vulnerabilities now that it's just a matter of time before one of them comes across your website and finds a security weakness. So, yeah, I mean, if you're relying yeah. on the web, for, if you're relying on the website for any kind of business leads or sales, then, you know, a little bit of maintenance and patching goes a long way. Yeah, and the thing is, if you're in your uh, website doing updates or doing content, you're going to see the notification that there's a new version anyway, but you can automate the process if you want to. Mm-hmm. And you know, not all hosting is created equal and some hosting platforms are able to do this more easily. So it just, just depends on who you're using as to what you can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of web developers put restrictions when they uh, build a site for clients. So what they're logging into is that you may not have full administration access. So you've got to check that with your web developer that you're not just logging in as an editor or an author or something like that and not having full admin access. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So, what's the next one? Well, the next one is Akizme spam filtering. Um, a lot of people use Capture. One thing that bugs me is that a lot of people use Capture forms on their contact form. Um, but there's a lot of, I'm talking in WordPress in particular here, there's a lot of other ways that you can filter for spam without annoying the user. So in WordPress in particular, there is a free tool called Akisme, um, A-K-I-S-M-E-T, that can do spam filtering that is much better than that capture thingy. So um, yeah, I guess the, the broad action point here would be if you do have a capture on any forms on your website, it's worth investigating whether there is an alternative method of spam filtering that doesn't need the visitor to do something different or enter an additional field. Um, and if you're on WordPress, most contact forms, so Gravity Forms and Contact Form 7, will support Akisme and will filter all that spam without you know, without having that extra field. So that would be one thing to investigate yeah. as well, I think. I yeah. hate those uh, capture yep. things. There's really no need for them because there's plenty of other better methods, better methods that will eliminate spam. And also, if you're using Cloudflare, it will cut down on a lot of that spammy stuff as well because, again, a lot of the spam sent through forms... Um, is just by automated tools. So Cloudflare will cut out a lot of that nonsense as well. Very true. And it is a certainly a barrier to people contacting you if they have to put in those things and they recognize the characters correctly and they're trying it. They'll maybe have a go twice or three times, then they'll pack it in and leave. So mm-hmm. yeah, very good point. So next and, one. And yeah, next one, uh, alerting for uh, brand names and your names and business names, so alerts. Is that what you talk about from Google Google alerts? Yeah. People like, talking about your business? Yeah. I don't, I've don't. i got Google alerts and it doesn't really work anymore. So I use Mention. I think it's called Mention.net. Um, oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. Like I've had Google alerts for a while and I'll occasionally get one, but that, it doesn't work like it used to, but I use Mention.net and it pretty much picks up everything. So I've got brand names, uh, monitoring setup for... Um, our brand names and my name so if anything ever comes up on the web if there's you know some commentary someone mentions me I'll get an email a couple of a day or two later um, and also you know if you are a retail kind of business or an, um, an e-commerce business it can be a good way to pick up um, reviews about you or negative reviews um, and it's also a good way people may be talking about you in forums or online communities. So it's also a good way of seeing that and gives you the, the opportunity to get in and get involved, right? It's a, it's a good one. So I'm, saying, I'm, I'm actually sitting here looking at it now while we're talking, Brendan, because I haven't heard of this one. <laughs> it constantly amazes me that I'm in this space all the time and there's always something new. And we're always sharing things together back and forth about have you seen this? Have you seen this? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it looks, it looks very good. But yeah. you've been using it for a while, have you? Yeah, I've been using it for a couple of years now because I had the Google Alerts and I realized we're putting stuff out and they weren't triggering. So um, if you do some Googling, you'll see a lot of people say the same thing, that Google Alerts just doesn't work anymore. Um, so mention.net is a great mm. alternative. 
But I think that's really important, awesome. particularly for retail-focused businesses, because there will be a lot of customer mentions around the web, good and bad. I think it's great, particularly for the good ones. If someone's talking about you or recommending you in a forum, then it looks really good. If you come in the next post or comment later and, you know, you, you get and join, join in the conversation or, you know, offer some help or, or whatever's going on or respond to the commentary. So I think it can be really useful yeah. for both the good and bad. And it's, I think it's for most people, it'd be a paid tool. Um, I don't think the free plan or I'm not even sure if they have a free plan anymore, but I don't think that would be appropriate. But, you know, for the small cost, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, because a lot of companies have, you know, teams of people sitting in front of their computers monitoring social media channels uh, for, for anything to do with them and their name. And if there's anything good or bad, as you say, they're onto it, they're responding to it dealing with it in the moment, make, taking advantage of the, the good stuff and, and trying to uh, reduce the negative. So mm -hmm. this is like having someone working for you, m watching over that sort of stuff. So it's very cool. Mm -hmm. I've got one last one here um, and it relates to email and spam because we have, you know, you get clients who occasionally someone will start sending spam with their email address or they're getting a lot of spam inbound to them or, yeah. you know, something related to spam. And there's an easy way to cut a lot of that out and that's something called an SPF record. So it won't be something you'd be able to do yourself. But if you are getting a lot of spam or you've got a lot of spam issues, um, I'd ask your IT guy to set up an SPF record for your domain name. So what that does, it's uh, it basically tells other email servers, it gives them a list of um, where your hosting is and the list of servers that are authorized to send email on your behalf. So it's a good way of just cutting down okay. some of the noise um, and it's not a big deal to add. Like it's a two-minute job for your IT guy to add that to your domain name or DNS. So that would be something else. We do that occasionally for clients where they're having some sort of spam issue. We'll add that in and most of the time it goes away. Um, it also makes your email delivery more reliable. So if you're doing a lot of email marketing, and I think for e-commerce businesses, this is a particularly good win. Having the SPF record can increase the delivery rate by 5 or 10%. So that's a pretty substantial win. If you've got a list of 10 or 20,000 mm. emails you're sending, 5% of that list is pretty huge. Um, and you do that, get that occasionally, you know, you do a a, a newsletter mail out or whatever and it does have a few images and things like that and you see it I see it with our emails sometimes sometimes they end up in the Gmail spam folder just because they have a lot of images and again that SPF yeah. record goes a long way to eliminating that because it you know it's kind of a stamp to tell email services that it's a genuine email if it came from one of your authorized email servers I hope that makes sense it's kind of technical yeah, yeah. Cool. SPF record Right, and is that is there a particular system to use that or to to do that? Where um, do, can where can people go to look at that sort of information? Well, that's really one you need to ask your IT guy. But um, okay. each different provider has its own SPF record. So you know, we use Google Apps okay. for email. So Google Apps has a specific SPF record that tells other email servers here are the list of Google's email servers that are authorized to send email on behalf of the search engine shop dot com. Okay, cool, awesome. Very good tip. I think that's it uh, for this particular subject. Cool. Unless there's anything else you've got to cover? Well, that's kind of it. Those are, I mean, if you hit all those points, you would have dramatically more protection than someone who doesn't. I mean, a lot of the stuff with security oh, yeah. is not necessarily being the strongest, but it's just, you know, a lot of those automated tools will go for the weakest target. So, you know, it's kind of like... Yeah. You know, the most basic level of protection from you know your house being robbed is shutting the door and locking it at night. So some of these things, from a technical perspective, there's no cost to do them and they're very common sense, but often they've just been neglected or there's gaps because there's so many different people interacting with you know your, your IT stuff or your website stuff. So um, it's a good checklist to go through. You know, you could sit down um, and just send a few emails to your, your web guy or your IT guy and get these things knocked out. Just ask the question, you know, are regular patches happening, you know, and setting up some of these things, just checking, spending the time. I think we've talked on like five different episodes, right, about the domain name stuff and how I think that's probably the biggest sure one we have, top yeah. one, right? Because <laughs> both of us deal with that pretty well, yeah, regularly. So, yeah, yeah, because if you don't have the domain name, everything else we spoke about really doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. because it all fails from that point. Yeah. So, and yeah, it is, a, it is the tip of the spear for sure. 
Yeah, and I think you're right, like registering years into the future makes sense. If you're going to be in business for years, why not spend the extra 50 bucks and register the domain name for another five years? Kind of makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. It's ch- it's chicken feed compared to what you could actually lose in time and hassle and money. Mm. So, uh, yeah, protect yourself by forward thinking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome, mate. Thank you. That was great as usual. Cool. So we'll... Uh, Finish up on that one. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Brendan. We'll speak to you on the next episode. Catch you then. Bye for now. You've been listening to The Business Marketing Show. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher.